Hey everyone, this is James. Today let's talk about Theedar, a $450 budget mini ITX gaming PC. So I was recently asked by a family member if I could build a new PC on a £350 budget, which works out about $450. The requirements were simple. A PC with a small footprint, quick boot times, the ability to handle basic productivity tasks, and lastly, the capability to play modern games at 1080p on medium to high settings. The end result was this, Theedar, a budget mini ITX gaming PC. So, without further ado, let's take a look at the parts for the build. Firstly, we have the processor. I decided to go with the ever popular Intel Pentium G4560 Kaby Lake CPU. With two cores and hyperthreading, the performance of this processor is comparable to an i3-7100 and it costs around half the price. For the motherboard, I went with the ASUS H110i+. This is a great budget mini ITX board with support for DDR4 RAM and USB 3.1. Unfortunately, it doesn't have an M.2 slot or integrated Wi-Fi, so if you can't use an Ethernet connection, you might need to buy a USB Wi-Fi adapter. If you buy an LGA 1151 socket motherboard, it's worth checking that it supports KB Lake out of the box. The board I received was from old stock, and I had to use a previous generation Skylake G4400 and ASUS's Easy Flash utility to update the BIOS firmware before I could use the G4560. Not ideal, but partly my fault for not checking. Next we have the memory. I purchased a 16GB kit of Crucial Ballistic Sport DDR4 2400 RAM. 8GB is plenty for a budget build like this, but I bought this kit earlier in the year before RAM prices doubled in value. As for storage, I chose a Toshiba Q-Series 256GB SSD. I picked this up simply because it was the best value, solid state I could find. And I prefer to have the OS and key applications running from an SSD. If 256GB isn't enough, you can always pick up a cheap 1TB drive to add as additional storage. I later added a spare 1TB WD Blue, but this was not included in the original build. The graphics card of choice for this build is a MSI GTX 1050 2GB OC edition. The card is a great performer at 1080p, it runs cool under load, and the OC version does have slightly higher clock speeds out of the box. If you can stretch your budget just a little further, the 1050 Ti is definitely worth a look. To power the PC, I picked up a 400 watt Cooler Master B series PSU. This is an 80 plus certified power supply with a silent fan and it provides more than enough power for the components in this build. I would have liked a modular PSU to help with cable management, but unfortunately the options available were out of my budget. Finally, to house all these components, I chose the Cooler Master Elite 110 Mini ITX Armor Edition case. I've used the standard Elite 110 in previous builds, and it's a great little case, but the few gripes I had were a lack of cable management, which is understandable given its size, and the mesh front panel, which collects dust quickly and it's difficult to keep clean. Thankfully, with the Armour Edition, the mesh is now replaced with a brushed aluminium front panel, which I think works a lot better and gives a much more sleeker appearance. This is certainly one of the best value mini ITX cube cases you can buy. Now, on to some benchmarks.
So there we have it. Vidar is a solid performer, capable of playing many AAA titles at 60 frames per second or more, at 1080p on high settings. It's worth noting some of the components for this PC were purchased earlier in the year, so prices may have changed. But I'll leave a link in the description below to all the products used in this build, as well as some alternatives. I now plan to release content on a regular basis. If you want to see more tech reviews or PC builds like this, drop me a comment below. Thanks for watching. If you liked today's video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and until next time, see ya!